Optimizing your Google Shopping campaign is one of the best things you can do for continued success with Google Ads. And in this video, by the end, you're going to know exactly how to optimize your Google Shopping campaigns like a pro. But for that, you will have to stick until the end. Now, when it comes to optimizing Google Shopping campaigns, majority of e-commerce store owners absolutely mess it up and here's exactly what i mean the more changes that they make within the campaigns the more things that they do meaning the more buttons that they click the better the result the better the optimization process is going to be and this is one of the biggest misconceptions of google shopping ads now here's exactly why time and time again in a lot of my google ads videos i've always mentioned that you want to be waiting about three to seven days before you really start making any changes before you optimize in any way shape or form and a lot of people don't listen to this here's exactly what happens when you make too many changes with google ads you end up completely ruining the optimization for that campaign because every single change, Google thinks of it as a brand new learning curve, meaning the learning phase for Google ad starts from zero. Now, if you're from Facebook, TikTok, whatever other advertising platform, this may really not be a big deal. But with Google, it is a big deal because it is a search based platform. It entirely runs on the basis of your audience, meaning if somebody searches for your product, only then will it be shown. So if you go in every single day, if you change things within the campaign, along with trying to adjust to the different searches done every single day for your products, now it has an extra task of optimizing and adjusting to every single change you're making. And it's just too much for Google ads. But before I actually go into the actual process of exactly how to optimize your campaigns, it's important to kind of take a step back, preferably to about a year or so to look at the previous strategy as to what I always used to recommend for Google shopping ads optimization in case you still do this. Now here on my screen, I have my Google ads account open and I'm going to be selecting the smart shopping campaign that I have running within this campaign. And what I want you to know is exactly how the standard procedure would have been to optimize this campaign because um, about 99% of e-commerce or owners still follow this, including you. So what the normal procedure would have been would be to go inside the shopping campaign, whether it's a smart shopping or a standard shopping, doesn't really matter. And the number one step that you would have often taken is to rank it by the cost, look at the most amount spent for the product, and make sure that you're looking at a decent time frame for the campaign before doing so, but then optimizing based on the cost. So if the profit margin here is $15, it already spent 20, so it would mean this product would need to get excluded. This would have been the normal procedure and what I used to always recommend with shopping, but things have changed significantly. This strategy right here is no longer valid. And here's exactly why. This strategy would have been based entirely on this column right here, which is the cost column, meaning if it crossed a certain amount of ad spend, that product would have needed to be excluded, period. But this strategy did not really take into account a lot of other things affecting each product and the way it is shown within Google's auction, meaning the average cost per link click, the overall clicks that product got, the overall impressions it got, the CTR, etc. This old strategy was fully focused on just the cost, which in 2022 and onwards may not be really ideal. So here is exactly how this brand new strategy that I've developed comes into play. Now, don't get me wrong, this cost strategy is still valid. It is still going to be used with this brand new strategy, which I have developed. But now, this brand new strategy is a much bigger combination of these different metrics. It is not only going to be just off of the cost anymore, but now it is going to be a combination of some of the most important metrics, such as the link clicks, the average CPC, and so forth. And here is exactly why I have developed this strategy instead of just sticking to my old ways, which I always used to recommend on my YouTube channel. So again, if we go onto this campaign section right over here for this ad account and look at some of the average CPCs, we can see exactly why this 
kind of strategy came into play. So first things first, this top campaign right over here has a $2.69 average CPC within the last 30 days. This one a $2.84, this one a $1.75, this one 67 cents, this one 92 and so forth. The main thing I want you to get from looking at these average CPCs is looking right here at an average, the average CPC is about $2. Now, if you look at my previous videos, I never had such high CPCs in my entire Google Ads life. And this ad account, which is actually a client account, completely changed the way I look at Google Ads. By the way, this Google Ads client is under my agency, YoroMarketing.com. If you are running an e-commerce store doing over $30,000 in sales and you wanna scale your store further, Go on over my website at yoromarketing.com, book a call with me to see if I can help you scale your store. But this client did exactly that. And the thing I found out very quickly was that the average CPCs were extremely high. Now this store is a high branded store. It sells high end watches over $100, $200 and so forth. So this average CPC is pretty self-explanatory. But the old strategies, which I always used to recommend for launching campaigns, for optimizing campaigns, just did not work for this account at all. And it kind of left me stumped for a bit of time until I figured out this brand new strategy, especially when it comes to optimizing the campaign. Now, there are a few benefits when it comes to looking at not just the cost, but also looking at the clicks, average CPC, impression, and so forth when optimizing your campaign. Benefit number one is now, this is going to lead your products to get enough impressions so that you are able to say that this product was shown enough times and for you to 100% be sure that this is a losing product. Because if we look at it right over here, let's say for example, the profit margin here was only $15 and this product spent $20 that would mean that I would need to exclude this product completely. However, that would really not be ideal because in this case, this product only got 19 clicks. The average CPC is a dollar eight cents and it got 8,000 impressions. So with 19 clicks, we cannot really be sure and we cannot be 100% fully confident that this product is a losing product. Why? Because it only got 19 clicks. That is nowhere enough and that is nowhere close to the average conversion rates majority of the stores have. Now, majority average conversion rates are about 1% to 2%. So out of 100 clicks, you should be expecting about one sale to two sales, maybe more if you have a very good website. So if we only get 19 clicks, there is no way that we are able to say in 100% confidence that this product is a losing product. So just looking at the cost is really not the ideal way to go. This strategy that I'm about to show you guys, make sure that this doesn't happen and this product is shown enough times in terms of clicks, impressions, and even the overall cost that we can be sure before excluding that this is a losing product. But number two benefit of this strategy, which I'm about to show you guys is, this works regardless of which niche industry that you are in. So this store is selling watches. It's gonna work for this store. If you are a general store, it's gonna work for your store. If you're a fashion accessory store, if you're a kid's store, it's gonna work for you regardless. So this is really the main benefit of having a strategy like this. But enough talk about exactly why this strategy is so beneficial. Let's start talking about exactly the entire optimization process and exactly what you should be doing. So. For this, you will need a shopping campaign running. It doesn't really matter if it's a smart shopping or a standard shopping, but for the sake of this example, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go inside a standard shopping campaign because with a standard shopping campaign, you just have a few extra steps which you need to take in terms of optimization. Now, keep in mind, optimization needs to be done every four to seven days. Ideally, if you're running a campaign with a budget of $50 per day or less, you want to be doing it every seven days. If it's a $50 and above, about four days or so is ideal. But for this campaign, since we're running it at a $30 a day budget, you should not be optimizing this campaign before the seven day mark. But every time that you want to go in and optimize a campaign, here's exactly the process that you should be going through. And here's the process that I personally take for every single campaign. So first things first, regardless of whether it's smart or standard, I go inside the campaign and I go inside the product section. My optimization technique begins with the product section. And within the product section, once I'm on this page, what I like to do is I like to click on the add filter button right over here. And I like to add a few different filters. First filter that I like to add is the product status ready to serve. 
This is extremely important because this means that I'm only looking at the products which are currently running within this campaign. Either they're fully running or they have some kind of limitation to them. I do not want to be looking at products I've already excluded or that are not ready to serve or disapproved. I only want to be again looking at products which are already running within this campaign. Number two thing I like to look at is product with greater than 500 impressions. As you see right over here, when I did that filter, there was only one product showing up here. Now, if you are dealing with something similar where it's only one or two product, maybe three products coming up, here's what you can do. You can change the time frame to a bigger time frame. In this case, I'm just gonna change it to all time. And as you see, that made no difference at all for this campaign. And that is simply because if we go ahead and deactivate all of these things, if we just close this down, we can see that this campaign has not been running for too long of a time. So if we go ahead and look at the actual amount that this has been running since and change this to back to last 30 days, we can see that it has actually been running since about the past few weeks. And this campaign has not really been spending much budget at all. So this would not be an ideal campaign to optimize at all. Let's look at another campaign which has spent a lot more money. So for example, let's look at this fourth campaign right here, which is also a shopping campaign. We are gonna do the same thing. We're gonna start on the product section. We're gonna go ahead and add those filters in. So again, ready to serve, ready to serve limited impressions. We want it to be greater than 500 because again, this new strategy, it's all based off of the link clicks, the amount that you actually spent and the impressions. These all things are very important for this strategy. Now we can see a lot more products came up to be specific 15 products, which is much better than just one product. Now, what we're gonna do for the sake of this strategy, we're gonna rank it based on the cost. So the most cost should be at the top and it should be in descending order. So the first product right here spent $61. Next one, it spent $57 and so forth. So again, descending order. And here is exactly where the strategy begins. We are going to start by looking at the overall cost spent of that product as well as the link clicks, because these two things we are going to compare side by side. Now, here is a rule of thumb. If your cost has exceeded past the profit margin, let's say the product profit margin here, we sell it for $164, but let's say the profit margin is only $60 and it spent $61. In normal strategy mode, I would have already gone in and excluded this product. However, this product has spent about a dollar extra over my profit margin. I am not going to exclude it in this case because with the link clicks, it has only gotten 88 link clicks. The new version of this strategy is you should have the product spend about 10 to 20, maybe even $30 over your profit margins, or it should get at least 100 link clicks. And I preferably think that you should be aiming more towards getting those 100 link clicks despite the product really going over the profit margin. So in this case, even though it has gone over the profit margin and even though the profit margin is $60, but it spent $1 extra, I am not going to worry about this product unless it has gotten over 100 link clicks or it has gone way too high over my profit margin, about $30 or so above my profit margin. So $90 in this case, if it had spent $90 and if it had gotten 88 link clicks, I would have gone in and I would have excluded this product. However, it is within the $30 excess profit margin. It only spent $1 extra and it has not gotten a full 100 link clicks. So I am going to let this product run until it gets 100 link clicks. Now, if for example, let's say this goes up to $70 and it crosses 100 link clicks and it has zero sales at that point still, that is when I'm going to exclude that product completely. So. For the first part of this strategy, what you're gonna be looking at is you're going to be looking at the overall cost and you're going to be looking at the overall link clicks. Preferably, you wanna be looking at the link clicks to see if it has gone over 100 link clicks and only exclude it if it has gone over 100 link clicks with zero sales or if it has gone over about $30 or so excess profit margin. And in this case, again, if it was $60, that would mean above $90. So in this case, we are not gonna be excluding this product. For this product right over here, same thing. It has spent $57, but it has only gotten 87 link clicks. However, with 87 link clicks, we have gotten one sale. And with that sale, we are at a 3.37x ROAS. Now, in order to really calculate this correctly, you need to 
know what your break even ROAS is. And there's a lot of calculators out there which you can use in order to determine what the break even ROAS per product is. But ideally, you want to be aiming at about 100 link clicks before you really decide to exclude that product. Now, this product did get us a sale before that 100 link click amount. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to let it spend up to the profit margin, let's say maximum of $60 per sale. So this means that now that I got a sale below that $60 profit margin, I'm going to let it run until it spends another $60. So by about $120 spent or 200 link clicks, I should have two sales. If I don't have two sales by about $120 of ad spend or about again, a $30 excess profit margin to about $150 ad spend, or in this case, 200 link clicks, I'm going to go in and I'm going to exclude that product. So this is the first part of the product optimization process, which you want to be going through. Look at the ad spend, look at the link clicks, anything above 100 link clicks, regardless of whether it has crossed the profit margin or not, go ahead and exclude. But if it has crossed the profit margin and it is not at 100 link clicks, let it run a bit more until it gets to that excess of $30 profit margin and let it run until it gets to that 100 link click amount. Once it gets to that 100 link click amount, only then go ahead and exclude it. I know that might sound a bit confusing, but keep things very simple. You want to be doing this for every single product until you get to the products which have barely spent any money. So for example, if I know that every single product that I'm selling on my store has a minimum of $30 profit margin, there's no really any point of looking at these products which spend only $19 and um, got only 28 link clicks. Because again, this is way too far from my average profit margins that to my minimum profit margins of $30. So in this case, what do I do? I only look at those products which have spent the most amount of money. And in this case, these are the only ones that really are worth looking at. But this is only the first step of optimizing your Google shopping campaign and that to the product section. Just again, rank it by the cost. Look at the ad spend. Look at the clicks. If excess of $30 profit margin and less than 100 clicks, but zero sales, go ahead and exclude it. But if over 100 link clicks and even if it has not reached the profit margin, but zero sales, go ahead and exclude that product. But again, if the product is profitably getting you sales, so in this case, this is a 3.37 ROAS, and if I know my break even ROAS is a 2.5, then of course this is doing good, and I want to let it spend until about 200 link clicks or $30 extra profit margin times two, because I'm on my second sale now. So if I need a sale again, every $60 ad spend, I would let it spend about $120 to $150. But again, my main focus would be the link click. So 200 link clicks only then would I exclude this product if I don't have the second sale. That is the first step of the optimization. Now let's move on to the next step of the optimization. And we're not done with the product section yet, because now the next step is to rank it by the lowest CTR to the highest. So in ascending order. So for example, this right here has 0% CTR, this has 0.13% CTR, because now we're gonna be excluding products based on the CTRs. And this second step is extremely important for you to do, because if you know anything about shopping campaigns, you know that with a shopping campaign, CTR is extremely important. You wanna aim at a CTR of 1% or higher for the entire campaign. If we go onto the main campaign section, and if we look at this campaign right here, which we were just looking at, we can see that the overall CTR for this campaign is 0.45 in the last 30 days. This is not good at all. We wanna be getting this campaign CTR at a 1% or higher number. And in this case, that is just not happening. So here is what we do. We go into the product section, we make sure those filters are again chosen. And what we do is we rank it by the CTRs in ascending order, so the lowest first. And what we are looking at is we are looking at any product which has zero link clicks, but over 500 impressions. So in this case, this product has gotten 713 impressions in the last 30 days, but it has zero link clicks. That means this product is doing extremely bad after about 713 eyeballs on this product, there was nobody interested enough to click on this product. What does that tell me? It tells me that this product is better off just getting excluded because it is just driving down my entire campaign CTR. Because again, this is just counting as zero clicks, but 713 impression. That is big damage on my entire campaign CTR. We don't want this little bad apple to bring down the entire campaign. So what do we do? We go in and we exclude this product. And excluding products is extremely simple in case you don't know how to do it. You just go ahead and copy this and you copy the item ID. In this case, we're just gonna go ahead and copy that item ID and we go over to the product group section. 
From here, you will see that all of the product groups are already chosen here. If they are not, what you would need to do is you would need to hover over all products. You would see the plus button and you would need to click on that. But in this case, since we have already added these item IDs, we're just going to click on the pen button right over here, which you see after you hover over it. Once you do that, you want to make sure item ID is chosen from this drop down. You want to paste in that item ID, which we just chose, and you want to make sure that item is chosen and you want to click the second option, which says save without editing bits. Once you do that, you want to filter that product out. So make sure for the recent filters or just type in product groups right here. I've already typed that in previously, so I'm just going to choose that, but type in product group. And within the product group section, just go ahead and paste in that item ID. From here, you would just click on that little green button and you would exclude that product out completely. That is exactly how you exclude products from a campaign. But going back now to this CTR section, we are definitely going to be excluding this product because again, this is our second criteria. If I don't have one link click every 500 impressions, I'm going to exclude that product period. So this product is getting excluded. Now we look at this product. This product has one link click and it only only has 743 impressions. So this falls into our criteria of one click every 500 impressions. It passes. So we do not need to exclude this product. Now we look at this product right here, nine clicks and 4,177 impressions. So if we were to get one link click every 500 impressions, that means after nine clicks, there should be about 4,500 impressions in total because nine times five is 45. And this product also matches that criteria. So we are not going to be excluding this product. It looks like for this criteria, the only real product that is getting excluded is this one. But for example, let's say if this product had gotten one link click, but for the impressions, it had crossed 1500 impression. This would be the next product which we exclude and simply by 1500 impressions, we should be getting three link clicks because that is just our rule of one link click every 500 impressions. And this would not match our rule. So we would go in and exclude this product, but it does. So we're going to leave it blank and we're only going to be excluding this first product. So this is the two step process of product optimization. Number one was to exclude based off of the ad spend and the link clicks. Number two, which is based off of the CTRs and the overall impression. This is exactly what you need to be doing within the product section every four to seven days. Anyone making all of these optimizations and these product exclusions all at once. You don't want to be doing this on one day and then tomorrow you're going to come in and look at the CTRs. No. You want to be doing this all on one day, but you're not done with the optimization of the campaign. That was only the optimization of the product section. Let's move on now to the second part of the optimization, which is within the keyword section. Now, the keyword optimization has changed significantly as well, because previously I used to recommend that you just come in, you just look at the cost and you exclude anything which has spent over 10 to $15 without a sale in 2022 and onwards. You really don't want to be doing that and you want to be limiting the amount of keyword exclusions that you do, because the more exclusions that you do with keywords, the higher the chance of you ruining the optimization. And since 2022 began, I've seen this happen more and more often where I would go in inside a campaign and I would do a bunch of exclusions for the keywords just because those were bad keywords and I knew they were bad based on the data. But what I would notice is that within the next couple of days, even the next couple of weeks, for some reason, that campaign would completely get destroyed. It would take weeks for that campaign to get back to the level it was at originally. So here is the conclusion which I have come to. Instead of making those big optimizations within the keywords where you just go on this big spree of excluding every bad keyword which you see, you want to limit it to about five to 10 maximum of 15 keyword exclusions every four to seven days. And you can do these exclusions on the same day that you do the product exclusions. But here's exactly what you do. You want to go in first of all to the filters and you want to add the first filter for impressions, which is greater than 250 impressions. You don't want to be looking at any keyword which has less than 250 impressions because it's just not enough impressions to make any kind of sound judgments on that keyword. But once you make sure you have over 250 impressions, here is what you do. Now you rank it by the cost. And by the way, look at it about the last 50 days because 30 days really is not enough for keywords to gather the amount of data that you need to make any sound judgment. So here we're looking at 50 days worth of data. 
the first thing you want to look at is the overall cost. Like before, the strategy remains the same in terms of the cost. If the keyword has spent over 10 to $15, and if your products are higher profit margins, meaning $100 and above profit margins, if that keyword has spent over $20 without a sale, you want to go in and exclude that product, period. So let's say, for example, my profit margin here was only $20 per product. What I would do is I would look at all the keywords at the top, which I spent the most money, and I would see which keyword has spent over $10 without a sale. Let's say, for example, this product had spent $12.83 and it got zero sales within the last 50 days. Obviously, because it spent over the $10 amount, which I don't want it to cross for my store, I would go ahead and exclude that product. And I would do the same thing for all the keywords which match this criteria, which is again, above $10 ad spend without a sale. Now, if my profit margin again was $100 and above, this would be $20 ad spend or more. So, so if this keyword spent $25 and above without a sale, I would go in and I would exclude that keyword or $20 and above. And that's just the criteria you wanna be looking at. So any keyword which spent over 10 to $15, ideally for majority of the stores, just exclude that. Next step of the keyword exclusion strategy is very similar to what we did with products. We're gonna rank it by the lowest CTR to the highest, and we're gonna look at all the keywords which crossed 300 impressions without a link click, and we are going to go in and exclude that. So in this case, we see this first keyword right here, which has 492 impressions and zero link clicks. We're gonna choose that to exclude. Next one, 409 impressions and zero link clicks. Again, we're gonna exclude this, and majority of the times you will see that such keywords are very, very broad keywords. Sometimes they're basically irrelevant to what you are selling, but instead of just focusing on keywords that are irrelevant to what you're selling, we're gonna look at the data to let us know exactly what should not be on our keywords list. So these two keywords for sure, because they have zero link clicks after over 300 impressions. And this one has one link click at 437 impressions. So our main goal here was to get one link click every 300 impressions. That means the second link click should have happened after around 600 impressions. So we are not gonna be excluding this. This one right here, again, we're gonna look at the link clicks, 12 link clicks, 5,145 impressions. In this case, we want one link click every 300 impressions. So that means the 13th link click should happen after about 3,900 impressions. In this case, this has already crossed 5,000 impressions and it has gotten only 12 link clicks. It has not gotten more than 12, which means it is below our criteria of one link click every 300 impressions. So what we're gonna do is we're going to go ahead and exclude this keyword as well. As you can see, it's already excluded, but just for the sake of this example, we're gonna assume it's not. So we would go in and exclude this keyword. And you do this for all the keywords that you see right over here until you get to the point where it's just not meeting our criteria. This is the next step of keyword optimization. First step was to base it off of the cost. Second step was to base it off of the CTR. Now, here is the third step of the keyword optimization process. Now, a lot of the times, what you will notice is that you are ranking for a lot of unnecessary keywords. For example, if you are trying to sell the product 3D printer and you rank consistently for a competitor's brand, which you don't wanna rank for, in this case, let's say for example, 3D printer Amazon, and you don't wanna be ranking for Amazon, but you notice that the word Amazon is not only visible in just one keyword, but you have about 500 different keywords where Amazon keeps on coming up because people just search up different ways for the keyword related to Amazon, but they are looking for 3D printers as well. Here is what you do. You go into the negative keywords list from the left, you click this plus button right over here, and now what you're gonna do is you're gonna add negative keywords or create a new list. In this case, we're just gonna go in and directly add negative keywords to this campaign, and we are going to add that branded keyword which we don't wanna be ranking for. So in this case, we want to be ranking for the keyword 3D printer, but we don't wanna be ranking for the keyword Amazon. So what you do is you come in over here and you write in in quotation marks, Amazon, and you write in in ending quotation marks and you hit save. That is known as phrase match. And in this case, Google, anytime somebody types in 3D printer Amazon or buy a 3D printer from Amazon, whatever the case may be, in whatever format they decide to write it in, 
as long as it has the word Amazon, you will not be spending money on it and you will no longer rank for it. This is an alternative method, which I just found out about in 2022, which you should definitely be using. And just for that, make sure to destroy that like button down below and subscribe if you haven't already. But this is known as the phrase match exclusion method, as I like to call it, because you are just excluding very, very broadly. And you can do this for majority of the keywords which you are ranking for, which you don't want to be ranking for. So in this case, 3D printer, Amazon, if you don't want to rank for Amazon, maybe you don't want to rank for Best Buy, Target, or whatever the case is, just write it one after the other, all those branded keywords, and you will no longer rank for those. And it's going to save you a lot of time instead of manually going in one by one and excluding each one, because that's a lot of time spent. But I do recommend for the first cost-based strategy and the CTR-based strategy that you'd go and do this manually. But those are the three ways of optimizing the keywords. You want to do this on the same day that you are doing the product exclusions, but products and keywords should be getting optimized on the same exact day. Now let's move on to the next type of optimization that you can be doing, which is in the audiences section. Now for the audiences, I only recommend that you do this every 30 days or so because audiences need a bit of extra time to really optimize the right way. And you wanna keep things simple for the audiences. First of all, if you don't have any audiences added, you wanna go in and you wanna add in a few audiences. There's a lot of remarketing audiences which you can add. In fact, I made a video on this as to how to create the remarketing audiences, which you can watch after this video. I'll leave the link for you in the description as well as in the top right, which you can click, but usually it will be under this section, how they've interacted with your business. Then you would need to click YouTube users. If you have a YouTube channel, a website, at visitors and so forth you would choose the specific types of audiences which you want and they would show up over here but we're gonna now transition into another account which are already has these audiences chosen so as you can see this specific campaign right here has already had those audiences selected for it usually once you let it run for about 30 days you should start to see this chart getting filled up with information and you can look at the different metrics for the chart as to how the audiences overall are doing but our main goal is to look at the show table and look at these different audiences right here because about 30 days or so later, you want to come in and you want to start optimizing this audiences section. So first things first for optimizations, you want to keep things very, very simple. In this case, you just rank it by the cost and you look at the cost per conversion as well as the overall ROAS that your audiences are getting you. So what I did for this campaign is I went in and I added the conversion value over cost column, which is basically the ROAS column. And I'm also gonna rank it by just the most ROAS to the least because I wanna see which audience from these audiences is doing the best and which one is doing the worst. Because whatever audience is doing the best every 30 days, I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna do the bid adjustment by increasing the bid by about 5% to 10% if you're more on the bolder side. In this case, I would just increase it about 5%. But if you want to, again, just go and do it by about 10% or so, it doesn't really matter. In this case, we would do this for this one because as you can see, this is getting a 16X ROAS. And I would do this for all the audiences which are matching our criteria, which is just basically killing it with the campaign. And we would do the same thing for the audiences which are doing bad. For example, this audience is doing a 0.42 ROAS after spending $200. In this case, we would not adjust it by increasing the bid. We would rather decrease the bid again by 5% to 10%. How much you do it is up to you. If it's doing really bad, I would just do 10%. If it's doing not that bad, I would just do about 5%. And you wanna do this for all the audiences every 30 days. That's pretty much it for the audiences section. You wanna keep it very, very simple. But once you do that, then you wanna move on to the next section, which is locations. Now for the locations, you can do this every 30 to 60 days, depending on the budget. So if you are running a campaign at about a hundred dollars a day or more, I would recommend doing this every 45 days, even to every 90 days. If you're running anything below a hundred dollars a day, do this every three months. You don't want to do this too often because it's just not enough data. But what you do is you click on whatever country you're targeting. In this case, United States, you would click on it. And this little pop-up menu should come up. You want to choose states from this because now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be optimizing based on the state. So what we would do is we would rank it again, either by the clicks like we did with the product section or by the cost. For the sake of this example, I'm going to do the cost and I'm still going to look at about the 50 days worth of data because the more data you look at here, the better it is. What I want to do is I want to look at all the states which have spent the most money but got me the least return. So for example, $306 spent in Texas, but it only got me two sales. Whereas in um, California, I spent $304 and I got three sales. And the same thing over here. For example, 
$298 and zero sales in Florida. So obviously if my profit margin is only $50 per product, I would go in and I would choose Florida and I would come into here and I would remove Florida because I don't want to waste my money on a state, which is just not converting. And $300, that's 133 link clicks, as you can see, that is enough data to know if a state is doing good or not. In this case, it's not doing good. So I would just go in and I would exclude that completely. And you want to do this for all the states which spend about two times to four times your profit margins. Um, you want to keep it a bit of a broader range because we're looking at states here. So you want it to spend a decent amount of money before you come to any conclusions. But that's pretty much it for states. Do it every 45 days to 90 days depending on the budget that you're spending every day. But that is pretty much it for the standard shopping campaign optimization. But we're not done yet because this was just standard shopping. Exactly how do you optimize that smart shopping campaign? Now, luckily this ad account right here has multiple different smart shopping campaigns running. And the beauty about this strategy, which I just went over with you guys is you will be applying the same method for smart shopping, but only for those things that are basically in your control. So here, obviously we cannot control keywords because there's no keyword section here. We cannot control locations because smart shopping doesn't give you the ability to control location and their bidding. So what we can really control is just the product section here. We can't even do any changes with devices. So go back in this video, watch the product section again to really understand how to optimize your product. But you would do the product optimization the same way I just taught you with a smart campaign every four to seven days. Nothing has changed at all. Every four to seven days, come in and just exclude the product section. And if you're looking to scale the smart campaign or the shopping campaign, I made a video on that as well. A very detailed video, which you can check out. The little card should have popped up in the top right. Just go ahead and click on that to see how to scale your campaigns further. But for optimization, follow the same exact strategy. But that is pretty much it for the optimizations of shopping campaigns. Now, here are some key things to keep in mind when optimizing your campaigns. Key thing number one, again, very important to optimize every four to seven days any budget below $50 a day really optimize every seven days for anything above $50 a day optimize every four days remember to do this because this is not Facebook ads this is not TikTok, Pinterest whatever the case may be you cannot go in and optimize your Google Ads campaign every single day because trust me you will end up de-optimizing your campaign and you will come back in the comment section just sad and mad about why your campaign just got messed up so listen to me when I say that optimize it every four to seven days that is really the best way to go with your campaign. But this brings me to key thing number two, which is to make all the necessary changes on a single day. So let's say you wanna optimize your campaign today, optimize the products today, optimize the keywords today, optimize the devices if needed, optimize the audiences if needed today, and wait four to seven days before you make the next optimizations on the products and keywords. Don't do it where you're gonna optimize the products today and then tomorrow you're gonna optimize the keywords or in seven days you're gonna optimize the keywords. Do all the optimization for the campaign on that same exact day, which brings me to key point number three, which is expect performance to kind of dwindle down and basically crash the next few days because that's just how Google ads works. That's how the algorithm works. Performance really needs some time to get back on track as to where it was previously because it goes into the learning phase one more time when you do this optimization and it needs to optimize not only for the keyword search volume, meaning your audience, but also for the changes which you just did. And it is a lot of extra optimizations compared to what kind of optimizations the algorithm would go through with Facebook or TikTok. So again, expect performance to really tank. That's just how Google works. It's very normal. So don't panic. Let it get back on track. But those three things, if you just combine with the optimization techniques I just showed you, you are going to be crushing it with your shopping campaigns. You're going to have shopping campaigns which run for years and years. But if you don't want to go through this hassle, if you just want somebody else to scale your campaigns for you, again, go on to my website at yoromarketing.com, especially if you're doing over $30,000 in sales or more, if you need somebody to help you scale your store to the next level. But again, if you found any type of value in this video, destroy that like button and destroy that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys next time.